Chancellor Cummings, the students have now assembled for the 2023 winter commencement exercises for the graduate school. Thank you, Dr. Halliday, and good evening, graduates. Good evening, special guests. I am pleased to welcome you to the 2023 Winter Commencement Ceremony for the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. Graduates, this is your night. The sole singular purpose for which we gather here tonight is to celebrate and to recognize this important milestone in your life. As, you, as you've already just witnessed, we want this ceremony to be unique. We want it to be meaningful. We want it to be special. Now please remain standing for the invocation by Dr. Lindsay Whitley, Associate Minister of Revival Temple Church of God in Christ. Almighty Creator, as we gather to honor this significant milestone, we express our gratitude for the transformative journey undertaken at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. Bestow your blessings on these individuals as they stand on the cusp of becoming graduates, having delved into advanced knowledge, embraced interdisciplinary collaboration, and met the intellectual challenges of graduate studies. May their acquired skills lead to innovation and enlightenment in our evolving world. O oh Lord, instill in them a steadfast commitment to service and social responsibility, shaping them into transformative leaders for our global community. Grant them the strength to apply their knowledge with wisdom and empathy, to lead with conviction, and to uphold the values of honor and integrity. Encourage them to appreciate diverse perspectives and carry the enduring spirit of UNCP into their future paths. May their actions reflect the education they have received and their lives demonstrate the transformative power of advanced learning. As they stand ready to embark on new chapters, we entrust them to your care, hopeful and prepared for challenges and opportunities of an evolving world. May their future contributions be impactful, their lives fulfilling, and their legacies enduring for generations to come. Amen. Thank you, sir. Well prayed. Please remain standing and join in singing the national anthem performed by senior music major Victoria Martin.
Thank you, Victoria. And yes, we're going to let you sit. Please have a seat. Graduates, again, you know what an important occasion this is, and we could not agree more. Some 1,600 people are in this auditorium tonight to share this moment with you. I commend you on being here, what it took you to get to this point this evening, the hard work, the focus that you've ex exhibited. Enjoy this time. Listen to me, enjoy this time, don't rush a minute. It will pass all too quickly. Congratulations on furthering your education for pushing yourself to the next level. Now there are many representatives from throughout the university community, including faculty and staff members, trustees of the university, and special guests who are here to witness your commencement, celebrate your accomplishments, and a few to offer you a little advice for the future. I would like to recognize the university's senior leaders seated with the platform party here, who are here to support your achievement. I will ask each to please stand and remain standing to be recognized as their names are called. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Administrators of the university, Dr. Richard Gay, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Eva Skuka, Dean of the College of Health Sciences. Dr. Zoe Lacalier, Interim Dean of the School of Education. Dr. Mohamed Dijeri, Dean of the Thomas College of Business and Economics. Dr. Derek Oxendine, Dean of the University College. Dr. Joshua Bussman, Assistant Dean of the Esther G. Maynard Honors College. Ms. Jessica Colligan, Dean of Library Services. Mr. Dick Christie, Director of Athletics. Dr. Jess Bozma, Borsma, Chief of Staff and Vice Chancellor for Strategic Initiatives. Mr. Kelvin Jacobs, General Counsel. Ms. Jennifer McCarroll, Chief Communications and Marketing Officer. Dr. Kelly Brennan, Vice Chancellor for Enrollment Management. Dr. Jeff Howard, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Mr. Gabe Esterhaas, Vice Chancellor for Finance and Administration. Dr. Irene Aiken, Dean of the Graduate School. Dr. Diane Prusank, Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. From the University of North Carolina at Pembroke Board of Trustees, Mr. Kenneth Robinette, Mr. Ron Gibson, Ms. Allison Harrington, Ms. Mickey Gregory, Chair of the Board, retired Brigadier General Alan Jamerson. Please join me in applauding these leaders. <clears throat> you may be seated. We are joined this evening by members of our faculty. Faculty, would you please stand? Graduates, these faculty are here to celebrate and applaud you on your commencement. It is because of their hard work, their dedication, and their commitment to the university and to you that you are graduating. Join me now in applauding your faculty. <clears throat> faculty, you may be seated. I would also like to make a personal recognition. I want to thank my wife, our First Lady, Rebecca. Quite simply, Rebecca, I could not do this without you. A few years back, President Jimmy Carter described his wife, Rosalind, as the pinnacle of all he had accomplished in life. You are my pinnacle. You're my steeple of my life. You bring such style and class to our university that is truly admirable, and UNC Pembroke is fortunate to have you as its first lady, and I am blessed to have you as my wife my best friend, and a perfect partner in life. The, the country song goes, next thing you know, you get to know your wife again, and you're more in love than you've ever been. Rebecca, I wouldn't change a minute of our life together. Would you please stand? <clears throat> it
It is our tradition to put the flags of our international graduates' home countries on the stage. We are proud to include flags from Australia, Chile, China, Germany, Nepal, and Nigeria. We also have a somber acknowledgement as we remember the members of our campus community who are no longer with us. Our thoughts remain with the families of students Jalen Farrell, Donna Jacobs, Rodney James, Kara Hunt, Joshua Singletary, and very recently, Kel Lowry. Please join me in a moment of silence for these special individuals who will be forever considered part of our brave nation family. Join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Now graduates, there are several people here who wish to acknowledge your commencement and bring you greetings on this important night. I now invite Holden Hansen, Chair of the Faculty Senate, Tim Sampson, Chair of the Staff Senate, and Markel Ward, who represents the Graduate Student Organization, to bring you greetings. Good evening. I bring you warm congratulations from the faculty on this day. I love commencement. There's something about it. The, it's the pomp, it's the circumstance, it's the ritual, the performance. I mean, we have a stage and all these people on it are actors, essentially, playing a role, following a script in front of an audience. And many of us are wearing these crazy costumes. And soon you will perform your part as you walk across the stage to receive your degree. Commencement is a ritual. It tells a story. Dr. Joseph Campbell, one of the foremost authorities on myth and ritual, noted that stories and legends have been told by human beings through the ages to explain the universe and our place in it. And one such story is the hero's journey. The basic motif of the hero's journey is like a death and resurrection leaving one condition and finding the source of life to bring you forth in a richer and more mature condition. It's a transformation. Now everybody is a hero in their birth, from a little water creature living in the realm of the amniotic fluid and then coming out an air-breathing mammal that ultimately will be self-standing. Childbirth it's a heroic act on the mother's part too, right, moms? Yeah. The father quest is a major hero adventure of finding what your career is, and what your nature is, and what your source is. An example is the story of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars setting out on a journey to find his father. I think the pursuit of a college degree is a lot like the hero journey of death and resurrection and the father quest. And if we happen to not be heroes in the grand sense, we must take the hero's journey inside ourselves, both spiritually and psychologically. Commencement comes at the end of your journey at UNCP, but ironically, to commence means to begin. A new hero's journey awaits. May the force be with you. <laughs> Good evening, graduates, family, distinguished class, and platform party. I bring greetings on behalf of Staff Senate and the great staff around our university. Students, if you take a moment and close your eyes and think about your years here at UNCP, you can probably think of a staff member that has assisted you over your time. It may have been the graduate school, assisting with registration or offering those words of encouragement. The care team checking in on you or your library staff assisting you read a research paper. We have many stories like this where staff has made sure that we are living the mission of changing lives through education. I would also like to offer a personal recognition to congratulate my wife, Trayera Sampson, 
who will be graduating tonight with a Master's of Elementary Education. With all the hard work you've done and all our little children running around, trying to get things done, great job and well deserved. Congrat graduates, please remember this. No matter how small you, the job, where your career takes you, your title, or how you define your next chapter. Your actions can make a difference in someone's life and you can help them reach their next milestone. Again, on behalf of Staff Senate and all of our staff members across campus, congratulations and go Braves. Good evening, everyone. Earning a master's degree is an achievement that few accomplish, and it is to be valued. You have mastered your field of study, and with that success comes a great honor and responsibility. Your degree forever links you to the University of North Carolina at Pembroke, and all of us graduating before or after you. Please take your responsibility seriously and represent us well as you wear your UNCP distinction with pride. Keep in touch, share your successes, and go Braves. Thank you, Holden, Tim, Markell. We are honored to have a member of the University of North Carolina Board of Governors with us this evening. Governor Gene Davis was appointed by the North Carolina General Assembly this year to serve a four-year term. Over the years, he has been appointed by three different North Carolina governors and legislatures to fulfill numerous boards and commissions. As an undergraduate at UNC Chapel Hill, he was president of the Association of Student Government. As a law student, he started a new law journal, served as chief justice of the UNC School Honor Court, and led the law school's largest legal fraternity. It is my honor to now invite a great supporter of UNC Pembroke to the podium, Governor Gene Davis, who will bring greetings from the Board of Governors and the UNC system. Governor Davis. Chancellor Cummings, thank you for inviting me to attend this momentous occasion in the life of this extraordinary university and in the lives of those graduates and their families and loved ones. You know, you said earlier that we could offer advice. I had not been told that until just now. I was told to only bring greetings. So at the end, if I go off cue, I hope that's okay, Chancellor. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Governors of the University of North Carolina, including our Chair Randy Ramsey, and on behalf of UNC System President Peter Hans, it is my honor and my pleasure to come humbly before this august and erudite University of North Carolina at Pembroke community, to offer greetings to the families and friends of graduates, to the faculty, to the staff, the alumni, the trustees, including Chair and General Jamerson, to Chancellor Cummings and the First Lady, to other members of the platform party, and most importantly, to those we honor today, the dedicated scholars who have reached this important milestone in their academic journey. Today we celebrate these graduates who have worked hard by day and by night, often under grave inconveniences of life, to gain knowledge, to advance themselves and their families, and to earn these prestigious academic honors. The University of North Carolina at Pembroke, the Lumbee Tribe, the town of Pembroke, this community holds a special place in my heart. And not just because of collard sandwiches. <laughs> Although they alone would be enough. It's because of the sense of community and family and love for one another that binds you to each other in this special place. 
Not only special because of the many friends I have who are here or who are from here. But because of the rich history of this distinguished institution. Over 140 years ago, the Lumbee tribe recognized the value of investing in education. And the tribe, working together with the North Carolina General Assembly, first established this institution as the Croatan Normal School. In the 1930s, the Lumbee tribe pushed this institution to offer a four-year college degree. And in 1939, this institution became the first and to this day the only four-year public college founded by indigenous people for indigenous people. That is a big deal. Over the years, the name changed Pembroke State College to Pembroke State University and now University of North Carolina at Pembroke. Along the way, this esteemed university has continued to move forward in extraordinary ways before many others admitting students of all races and creeds, a truly diverse university community that should be praised offering advanced degrees, and perhaps most important of all, taking the values of the Lumbee tribe, the values of commitment to family, commitment to community, commitment to faith, and commitment to education, and spreading those values across our state and beyond. I am incredibly proud Proud of this university, proud of this university community, and today, most of all, proud of you, graduates, as you turn the page on this significant chapter in life, you take with you the values cultivated and the education gained here at UNCP to empower you to make a meaningful impact for good in your families, your communities, your state, your nation, and your world. I am grateful and honored to be here to celebrate with you. And in offering one small piece of advice, knowing now that I may do so, gratitude, be grateful for all that you have and give thanks to your God, to your family, to your friends who've supported you, to your faculty, and to all those who have helped you on your journey. There's nothing more important in life, in my view, than living a life filled with gratitude. So I am grateful to you for letting me be here on this important day. Congratulations. 20 class of 2023 graduates. Thank you, Governor Davis. Uh, your constant, again, your constant and unwavering support of this university is clearly evident and it is so appreciated. I look forward to your upcoming campus visit, which you've requested. <laughs> From time to time, the University of North Carolina at Pembroke bestows an honorary degree on someone who has lived an exemplary life of service and achievement. We have such a person among us tonight that we want to recognize. For the conferring of the honorary degree, Dr. Richard Gay, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, will present the candidate. Good evening. Mrs. Vivian Jacobson is an internationally recognized expert on the world-renowned French-Russian painter, printmaker, and designer, Marc Chagall. 
Designing over 10,000 works of art in the mediums of stained glass, tapestry, painting, prints, and ceramics, Chagall is considered one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. Mrs. Jacobson's journey with Chagall began in 1974 when she befriended the artist and dedicated the next 45 years of her life to researching, studying, and lecturing on his life and art. Her clear commitment and dedication to preserving Chagall's legacy have made her a true luminary and recognized authority on the artist. A founding member of the American Friends of the Chagall Biblical Message Museum in Nice, France, Vivian assumed leadership roles that propelled the institution to new heights. Her tenure as president from 1978 to 1982 witnessed her orchestration of fundraising campaigns, contributing to the museum's exhibitions, concerts, library expansion, and even acquiring significant cultural artifacts, such as a replica of the 18th century Blanchet harpsichord. Mrs. Jacobson had the unique opportunity to work closely with Chagall during the last 11 years of his life. His experience, this experience allowed her to contribute significantly to major international projects and culminated in her authorship of the poignant memoir, Sharing Chagall. As a sought after lecturer, she relates her firsthand insights into Chagall's art with audiences across the globe of all ages, frequently drawing crowds for a glimpse into the life and works of her dear friend. Yet her impact extends far beyond the confines of museums and lecture halls and has had a significant impact right here on our campus. In 2016, alongside with her late husband, Ralph, Mrs. Jacobson had stand, established the Vivian, R, Vivian and Ralph Jacobson Scholars Program here at UNC Pembroke, a testament to their commitment to education and to the arts. In 2021, she generously gifted the University the Jacobson Chagall Art Research Collection, comprised of more than 40 years of dedicated work that includes documents, books, memorabilia, and photographs. Mark Chagall once wrote, the dignity of the artist lies in his duty of keeping awake the sense of wonder in the world. Mrs. Jacobson's life work has been keenly focused on sharing his, this philosophy through her research lectures, the establishment of the Jacobson Chagall Art Research Collection here at UNCP. She is, like Chagall himself, helping to keep awake the sense of wonder in the world by spreading his message of hope, peace, reconciliation, and love. Mrs. Jacobson's exemplary character, combined with her philanthropic and humanitarian contributions to society, distinguishes her as a worthy candidate for an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. Chancellor Cummings, it is my distinct honor to present Mrs. Vivian Jacobson. Provost Prusank, would you and Ms. Jacobson join me in the po up, up at the podium and over to the side? Ms. Jacobson, your philanthropy and support of education has benefited many, including students at this university, past, present, and future. The University of North Carolina at Pembroke is proud, proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. By virtue of the authority vested in the University of North Carolina by the state of North Carolina and the faculty and board of trustees of UNC Pembroke, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining, and I cause you to be vested with this hood appropriate to that degree. Dr. Persink, please invest Ms. Jacobson.
Congratulations, Dr. Jacobson, the first. I now invite Provost Persank to the podium to introduce your commencement speaker. Thank you, Chancellor Cummings. Graduates and special guests, it is with great honor that I introduce our commencement speaker for this evening, Dr. Jane Halliday. Dr. Halliday is a full professor in the Department of American Indian Studies and the recipient of the prestigious 2023 Board of Governors Award for Excellence in Teaching. Born and raised in California, Dr. Halliday earned a bachelor's degree in world literature from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Her early career as a high school English teacher in the San Francisco Bay Area paved the way for a transformative chapter when a passion for Native American and indigenous literature was ignited. This passion led her to pursue a master's in American Indian Studies at the University of Arizona and later a PhD in Native American Studies at the University of California, Davis. Since joining the UNCP faculty in 2006, Dr. Halliday has impacted lives far beyond the classroom. As a mentor, a friend, an advocate for her students. She has cultivated an environment where personal growth is as integral as academic achievement. In addition to her exemplary teaching, Dr. Halliday has been a driving force in advancing experiential learning and cultural exchange. Her involvement in the Indigenous International Exchange Consortium a groundbreaking initiative connecting UNCP with universities in Canada and Australia, underscores her commitment to global understanding and appreciation of indigenous cultures. Dr. Halliday's impact transcends borders, both figuratively and literally. She has led students on transformative journeys to Canada, Australia, New Mexico, and Costa Rica, embodying her belief that teaching and learning extend beyond the confines of the classroom. Her scholarly contributions, including the co-edited collection, Narratives Educating for Sustainability in Unsustainable Environments, and her essay, Coming Home, Affirming Community and Lumbee Children's Literature, reflect a commitment to advance knowledge and understanding in her field. Graduates and guests, I encourage you to listen to Dr. Halliday's words today and take note of her journey, one that has led to incredible accomplishments through following your passion in life. Please welcome me in joining your commencement speaker, Dr. Jane Halliday. I hope I can follow up on <clears throat> that introduction. Thank you, Provost. Good evening, graduates and beloved family and friends of graduates. Good evening also to my UNCP faculty colleagues and staff colleagues. It is an honor and a privilege to be giving tonight's commencement address for the graduating graduate class of 2023. While preparing this address, several helpful and learned colleagues suggested topics I might speak about, important issues like the decline of liberalism in higher education, the separation of church and state, freedom of speech in education, the intensifying threat of artificial intelligence taking over the writing of student papers, and many others. <clears throat> Hmm, I thought, those are all critical topics, it's true. And after much consideration, I thought, nah, I think I'll just talk about myself. <laughs> and thus continue a long tradition of commencement addresses at UNCP. <clears throat> after arriving at this important decision, another colleague asked me what my speech would be about. And I said, about eight and a half minutes and no more. Now, I am in no way trying to make light of the brief time I have to speak with you. As I said in my greeting, it is truly an honor to be giving this address. But I know that you're not here for long speeches tonight. 
You're here to receive your hard and well-earned graduate degrees and to share this night of celebration with the people in this room or those who weren't able to be here with you in this room that helped you support your success. You don't need me to remind you about the long hours, the hard work, the consistent stress, keeping up with homework while holding down one or more jobs, raising one or more kids, being a caregiver to someone, or needing medical care yourself, worrying about money and worrying about deadlines. You already know these stories much better than I do because they're yours. You may also know that because you persisted to earn a graduate degree, you have become part of a very elite group of people in this country since only 14% of Americans had attained an advanced degree according to 2022 U.S. Census data on educational attainment for people age 25 and older. So that's pretty cool. Well done. For all these reasons, everyone here celebrates every one of you tonight. Now, back to talking about me for a little while. When I applied to graduate school, I was clueless. I was 38 years old. I had no money saved, no plan for how to pay for grad school, and no idea if I'd find a job with my degree when I was finished. Sounds good, huh? As it happened, despite all the things that I did not have or did not know about grad school, what I did have was a passion for Native American literature, which started with reading a single book. That book was the novel Ceremony by Laguna Pueblo author Leslie Marmon Silco. That book is the seed of my origin story for how I came to be standing here speaking to you today. I never intended to go to grad school. I had always thought grad school was for super smart people and I didn't think that I was one, so it never really occurred to me to go. Graduate school was not a tradition in either the Halliday or Simpson lines, my father's and mother's people respectively. I'm fairly sure most of you had a much better idea than I did about what you wanted to do with your degree when you set out to get it and also gave a lot more thought to how you're going to pay for it than I did. If you didn't and you were more like me and decided to follow a passion, then I'm here to tell you that that can definitely work out too. And if you had a passion and a plan for grad school, I salute you. Getting my graduate degrees, my master's in American Indian Studies at the University of Arizona, and my PhD in Native American Studies at the University of California at Davis was the most transformative process I have intentionally undertaken. I met wonderful people who have remained permanent friends, several of whom are in this room tonight, and many of you have done the same. My graduate degrees led me on a journey to this incredible university where I have had the opportunity to get to know people in this community and also to travel to the beautiful homelands of indigenous peoples across the country as well as internationally. I'm grateful for all of it. I wouldn't change anything despite being initially clueless and taking out loans that I really wasn't paying attention to have to pay back until I had to. After tonight, you're embarking on the next part of your journey armed with a powerful educational and professional tool, your graduate degree. And you'll need it because the world is extremely complicated in a great deal of turmoil and our collective collaboration, the bringing together of all of our special skills, talents, and knowledge will be crucial to sustaining the places and the people we love. One of my favorite indigenous authors and community activists is Jeanette C. Armstrong, who is a member of the Silix or Okanagan people in the place now known as Eastern British Columbia. In her essay titled, Analkin Decision-Making as if Sustainability Mattered, Armstrong writes that this idea of community encompassed by my, as, as my ancestors understood encompassed a holistic, complex view of interconnectedness that demands our responsibility to everything we are connected to. Our traditional decision-making process grounded in this view involves a specific process called anaukin. 
Armstrong goes on to explain that the Analkin process has as its, as its origin a philosophy to nurture voluntary cooperation. The three syllables that make up the Okanagan word, Analkin, invoke an image of liquid being absorbed drop by single drop through the head or the mind, coming to understanding through a gentle integrative process. Coming to understanding through a gentle integrative process. Imagine the power of utilizing such a decision-making process in your lives and careers, one in which each person is allowed a voice in whatever that community might be, cultural, professional, spiritual, political, social, so that all in the community feel they've been listened to with respect and consideration, whether or not their preference is the one ultimately reflected by the community's final decision. I believe we have the power to do this more than we do. You are now the people who will be making decisions as leaders and collaborators, fortified with graduate degrees and specialized knowledges. You are all now a part of this most critical and powerful collective, equipped to make positive and sustainable change in the world. Change that encourages social justice, equity, and nonviolence for humans, lands, and our more than human relatives. Armstrong states that today we human beings face the biggest obstacles and so the greatest challenges to our creativity and responsibility. And I agree with her. She urges, let us begin with courage and without limitations, and we will come up with surprising solutions. Graduates, let us embrace Armstrong's challenge to be courageously creative and creatively courageous. I wish you all good things in the future, and I celebrate your achievement tonight as you move forward in our troubled, beautiful, ever-changing world, which needs all that you bring to it. Thank you. Thank you, Halliday, Dr. Halliday, and congratulations again on your recognition as the 2023 recipient of the Board of Governors Award for Excellence in Teaching. That is a high, high honor, and you should be proud. I know you are. Thank you again for all your good work for UNC Pembroke. All right, graduates, enough talk, right? <laughs> At this time, this is when it gets serious and it, uh, it's all focused on you. At this time, I invite retired Brigadier General Alan Jamerson, Chair of the UNC Pembroke Board of Trustees to the podium. It is his duty as Chair to authorize the awarding of your degree. Sir, I hope you're willing to do that. You should. <laughs> General Jamerson. Okay, did you, did you see what the chancellor did there? Anybody catch that? He says, graduates, enough talk. And then you invite me up to talk. <laughs> but I know what you meant, Chancellor. Thank you very much. Um, most of you probably don't know, but uh, my comrade to my right here, Professor Holden Hansen, and I are an entertainment team. He sets you up, and I knock you out. <laughs> so here's how this works. He came up earlier, and he told you that all this was a production. And this is the stage, and we're the actors, and we've got the costumes on. And so thereby, therefore, you're the audience. The challenge with a graduation is that being the audience, you probably don't get as much audience participation as you'd like, right? Okay, so here's what I do for you. I start the audience participation part of this. And I do that with two words, and you're welcome to join me at the right time, and you'll figure out when that time is. And those two words are, and now. Any UFC fans out here? Okay, so you've heard those words, and now. Okay, here we go. Chancellor, on behalf of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke Board of Trustees, it is with great pride that I congratulate you, 
the class of 2023. Graduates, as you cross this stage, you will take with you the memories and experiences you have gained during your time here and the relationships that you have formed that will continue long after you leave this campus. It's those memories, experiences, and relationships that will guide you and propel you as you pursue professional, personal, and community success. Now, as a proud graduate of the classes of 1983 and 1986, I can attest that your education from this institution has provided you the knowledge and the skills you need to achieve your goals. Wherever your future endeavors take you, I also encourage you to stay connected to this wonderful university, represent it with brave pride and support it with your time and resources so that UNC Pembroke can continue to grow into the top regional university that will educate future generations of learners, leaders, and visionaries. Again, congratulations, class of 2023. Speaking for the UNC Pembroke Board of Trustees and acting under the delegation of the power of the Board of Governors of the University of North Carolina, I authorize you, Chancellor Robin Gary Cummings, to confer the appropriate degrees upon the candidates as approved by the faculties. And now, pretty good. The university's provost, Dr. Diane Persink, will present the candidates for degrees. That is you. Congratulations. You. Chancellor Cummings, I call upon the Dean of the Graduate School, Dr. Irene Aiken, to present to you the candidates for degrees who will be awarded diplomas upon completion of all requirements uh, as prescribed by the faculty, the Board of Trustees of the University of North Carolina at Pembroke, and the Board of Governors of the University of North Carolina. This is it. I ask all candidates for the graduate degrees from the Graduate School to please stand and remain standing. Chancellor Cummings, the Graduate School, the Graduate Program Directors, Graduate Faculty, and I are pleased to present the candidates for the following graduate degrees. Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Education, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Master of Public Administration, Master of School Administration, Master of Social Work. Chancellor Cummings, all candidates for degrees are hereby presented. Thank you, Dr. Persang. I now ask all faculty who are here present on the stage or out in the audience to stand and please remain standing in support of these graduates and as confirmation of their meeting the rigorous standards set forth by this university. I now ask all UNC Pembroke alumni who are here on the stage or out in the audience, if you are an alumnus of this university, I ask you to stand and remain standing as witnesses to the conferral of these degrees and the acceptance of these students into the ranks of loyal alumni. If you're an alumnus of this campus, of this university, please stand. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, by the authority vested in me by the University of North Carolina Board of Governors and the UNC Pembroke Board of Trustees, I will confer upon these candidates the degree for which they have satisf satisfied all requirements with its associated rights, honors, and responsibilities. Please join me in applauding these students. You may be seated. Again, graduates, this is your moment. This is your shining moment 
This is the time that you've been thinking about, worrying about, dreaming about. Dr. Jonathan Drejos, professor in the Department of English Theater and World Languages and director of the theater program, will announce the names of those candidates who are present tonight. Since individual graduates are recognized by calling their names as they walk across the stage, we ask the entire audience to be respectful of the graduates and their families. We also ask that you remain seated and stay for the entire ceremony. An additional garment, a hood, as well as a robe that is wider at the sleeves than the baccalaureate gown recognizes graduates who have attained their master's degrees. Dr. Irene Aiken, Dean of the Graduate School, has the honor of hooding these students on stage. Will the candidates for master's degrees please step forward as their names are called? Master of Arts, English Education, Sherry Whitfield Grant. Health and Physical Education, Connor Daly. Brisson. Carly Alice Dawson. Arlena Rochelle Douglas. Ashton Valina Locklear. Master of Arts in Education, Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Leah Erin Kartner. Madison Cook. Haley Elizabeth Giles. Rebecca. Scott Harrison. <laughs> Ashley Wenley Hughes Risen. <laughs> Victoria Grace Ingalls. <laughs> Rebecca. Christine Sykes. <laughs> Elementary Education, Stephanie Barber. <laughs> Ali Christina Bonds. <laughs> Amisha Kiara Bryant. Christy Florido Ruiz. Aaliyah Quintail Hatcher. Christine Rochelle Jackson. Rochelle Raylene Jones. Riley Nicole Mullis. Lakeisha Ariella Revels. Desiree Simone Smith. Megan Lee Smith. Reading Education, Denise Pridgen Parker. Mary Cath Catherine Watson. Catherine Sessoms.
Professional School Counseling, Mariana Brolt. Chrismira E. Edgerton. Elliot Thomas Frobrot. J.C. Madison Gailey. Melody Feder Park. Brittany Jean Rouse. Camille Ashley Wallace. Art Education. Jamika Jasso Steele. Elementary Education. Sonia A. Alford. Elizabeth McKinley Olway. Natalie Baker. Militia Wright Berry Bay. Raven A. Bowers. Desiree Chavis Brayboy. Wendy Bailey Brigman. Sonja Michelle Butler Alford. Sydney Jet Cox. Chanel M. Garcia Lopez. Savannah M. Glasgow. Darius Hardister. Holland, Alicia Hunt. Davita Carter Jacobs. Ashley Marie Johnson. Catherine Rose Kozacek. Ashley Kimbre Kerfurst. Shania Dawn Lambert. Peyton Fleming LeBeau. Tyler Michelle Locklear. Tyler Page Locklear. Yeah. 
Lisa Fenton McNair. Joyce Evelyn McNeil. Sarah Ntumba Mubenga. Evie Marie Munis. Munis. Kaylee Brooke Oxendine. Nakia Parker. Shanita T. Peterkin. Summer Chigash Quinn. Tracy Rollerson. Ryan Shea Rogers, Sr. Trahera Love Sampson. Sabrina Sanderson Floyd. Stelford Lee Smith. Amanda Danielle Sweat. Danielle Tanzi. Health and Physical Education. Joseph Linwood Drury. Jason George Gerber. Brittany V. Patak. Bethany V. Patak. Jaisea Roberts. Middle grades education. Elizabeth Nicole Stewart. Kiana Elise McLean. Science education. Kayani. Fletcher, Social Studies Education, Ethan Cole Long, Special Education, Claiborne Parker Daniels. Taurus Fox Senior Shandy Denise Shipway A Victoria Alexis Utley Master of Business Administration, William Colin Abney. Kendra Odom Adams.
Lachu M. Adikari. Adonai Shabani Aloma Novella Michelle Alston Cheryl Marie Anderson Abigail Joanne Anunzen Maria F. Baker. Samantha Charles Faust Baker. Gabrielle C. Bosemore. Baysmore. Kayleen Bellevue Depard. Abby Elizabeth Burkus. Philip Dean Bowles. Olivia H. Branscombe. George Daniel Brown. Alexis Simone Bruner. Caitlin Elizabeth Bullard. Leah Renee Bumby. William Garrett Cabanis. Jaylene Cabrale. Aquana Latricia Carr. Felix Jose Carrasco. <laughs> Tiffany Davon Charlie. Adam Garrett Chavis. Chenoa Immerlin Chavis Noah Timothy Chervenka Mikhail Lee Collier Justin Collins. <laughs> Kayla Collins. <laughs> Morgan Ivy Collins. Gary Schofield Cooper. Ooh. 
Chase Clayton Crocker. Lisa A. Elsie. Lakeisha Chanel Cooper. Kaylee Ann Costello. Zanita Lucille Daniels. Shamika Dawes. Tara M. DeButz. Shantae. Yvonne Denning. Cesar Diaz Maldonado. Erin Sneed Dotson. Nicholas A. Dudas. <laughs> Vanessa Lynn Dunn. <laughs> Anna Edelin. Michaela Edwards. Stanisha Danae Evans Autry. James Morgan Everidge. Charissa Leon Frazier. Daryl Anthony Gatson II. Melanie Marie Godin. Thais Nicole Hall Dameron. John Hanna. Camila Antoinetta Hargett. Dorian Clivet Harriet. Ashley Morgan Harris. Dolores. Harris. Morgan K. Hayes. Tiana Monique Hicks. Najia Hightower.
Judith Hill Hoggard. Amanda Marie Holt. Terry Catherine Hurley. Anna Olivia Jacobs. Renster Joel. Hope Denise Johnson. Sharon, Sharon B. Johnson. Asisalan, Kyra Jones. Ashley Michelle Jones. Carlitha Jordan. George Caiaphas. Penny Nelson Killo. Dion. Dickens Lawson. Logan Lee. Kelly Elizabeth Leonard. Talisha. West Siena Leonard Kendra S. Lewis Madeline E. Linville Dean Alvin Lloyd Brent L. Locklear Justin Mahan Aaron Isaiah Martin Tariq Martada Martin Serena Maynard Jameson Trey McDonald Tajane Nakita McDonald Maisha Nicole McCoy Davian Ashley McMillan Nicholas Blaine McNeil. (laughs) 
William Matthew McNeil. Naya Melvin. Nicole Denise Miles. Malcolm Xavier Moses. Anirban Mukherjee. James O. Muir the Third. Deepa Shri Nagendra. Munachiso Adana Okechukwu. Georgia Ann Page. Andrea Valesios Khan. Apasia Denisha Denisha Parker. Mahogany Cheyenne Patterson. Dominique Darnell Potts. Brian Thomas Range. Bonnie K. Pollard. Tiara Dilisa Brenna Shadi Reeves Gatla Arty Ready Nathan Joel Zelinsky Reichert. Rebecca Lee Rodriguez. Jasmine Danielle Savage. Zion Nikayla Sellers. Tasha Ann. Silver Jarvis Cyril Simpson Courtney Amber Simpson. Shannon Singletary. Kelsey Joe Slinkard. Quatisha Jacay Solomon. Tariq Christopher Spears. Destiny Stannard. Savannah Nicole Starling.
Brittany Louise Stephens. Christiana Straub. Desiree Lynn Sturdivant. Brianna Lashie, Lashia Taylor. William Tate Thomason. Samantha Mercer Thompson. Mark Hollister Thompson. Emma Kirsten Tiff. Dante Joseph Turner, Jr. Hernan Vasquez Rodriguez. Haley Dawn Walters. Madison Lee Ward. Eugene Watson. Taya Chanel White. Quintarius. Jacal Witted Williams Chakita F. Williams Deja L. Williams Lauren Wilson Alexa L. Winston Richard Blake Yandel Master of Public Administration Bobby Darnell Foreman the Second Jalice Hadley. Hunter Blake Jones. Stephen Shane Stovall. Master of Social Work. Antoinette. Jade Russell. Laversa Smith. Master of School Administration. Albertine Lynette Daniel. Morgan. Christian King. <laughs> Chancellor Chancellor Cummings, all candidates for degrees 
have now been presented. Graduates, I must admit that personally, congratulating each of you as you cross the stage is one of the absolute best parts of my job. To see the joy in your eyes, the clear look of relief, sometimes abject failure, uh, fear, to finally say that you're done is such a rewarding moment to share with each of you, and I treasure it. Over the last few minutes, some of you, perhaps for the second time, officially became alumni of UNC Pembroke. So now I am pleased to invite your Alumni Association representative, Kendall Oxendine, to the podium. Kendall. Forgive me, I gotta find my spot here. I think you turned one too many pages there, Chancellor. <laughs> On behalf of the UNCP Alumni Board of Directors, I bring you greetings. Today is a great day. Today is a day that will resonate with each of you for a very long time. There were probably some of you who thought you might not make it to this day. However, when you look back at the obstacles, the challenges, and roadblocks, potentially preventing you from being here this day. It was ultimately perseverance, a few come to Jesus meetings with your advisors, <laughs> or several caffeination sessions at Starbucks. So what's next? Where do you go from here? Many of you are familiar with the tagline, you can get there from here. Maybe you became familiar with the line during homecoming activities. Seen it on a t-shirt. You know where here is. I would argue that you start there. As a proud UNC alum, UNCP alum, my first act of community service was joining this amazing alumni board two years ago as one of its directors. Unfortunately, I waited decades post-graduation before, before truly taking advantage of what UNCP has to offer. World-class arts and entertainment presented by the Givens Performing Arts Center. Best-in-class cultural experiences, programming, and exhibitions presented by the Museum of Southeast American Indian and unrivaled NCAA Division II athletic events to include men's basketball exhibition games against Division I schools like the University of Houston and Duke this season alone. I've been inspired through building care packages for students who remain on camp campus during the holiday seasons. I've been transformed by amazing personal and professional relationships established at various UNCP hosted events like the Distinguished Alumni and Hall of Fame ceremonies and speaker series, dedications of the Thomas School of Business and the Curtin Catherine Locklear American Hi Indian Heritage Center, as well as occasions like today's commencement. Lastly, I'm motivated to continue to serve this stellar university and the surrounding community. What an experience it has been. You can experience the same. You had the support of this alumni board, 30,000 alumni, and a degree from a reputable university recognized regionally, nationally, and internationally. That's how you get there from here. Stay connected and involved with UNCP. Make the effort to return each year for homecoming activities. 
and ensure we have all your current contact information because yes, one day we're gonna be reaching out and ask you to make a monetary contribution. <laughs> Today you've joined a roster of very prestigious group and can proudly call yourselves UNCP alumni. Now be bold, be brilliant, and be brave. Congratulations, class of 2023. Kendall, well, well done, and he even got around to the point where we're going to be asking you for support, okay? <laughs> we're not shy about that. I so appreciate all the work that our alumni board does to move UNC Pembroke forward. As a group, the work of our alumni base is so important to our success, and I want to thank everyone who had a part in making this commencement a special time for our graduates. To those who set up the stage, our marshals, our public safety officers, to our commencement planning committee, to everyone involved in planning this special time for you, I thank you. Graduates, join with me. <clears throat> so the celebration is almost over and your life is about to continue, about to commence. Allow me just a few minutes to leave you with one last impression. What you have experienced in this moment over the last couple of hours is special. Let me ask you right now as you sit there, graduates, what is that feeling? What's that feeling that you're having right now as you sit there? A feeling of accomplishment a job well done, I finished the race. Despite all obstacles, every roadblock, despite every voice that said you should stop, you can't finish this, you can't do it, but you did it. You accomplished your goal. What's that feeling? I would say you've got a, a multitude of feelings, but I bet one of those feelings is happiness. Happiness. I've always found it interesting that the framers of our Constitution said that certain truths are self-evident, that all people are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights to include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Always struck me as odd, the pursuit of happiness. Inalienable means it's a right that can't be taken away from you. It can be denied, but it can't be taken away from you. So you have inalienable rights to life, to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, the government's not responsible for your happiness. They can't provide that happiness. Note that we're not guaranteed happiness. What you are guaranteed by the Constitution is the right to pursue happiness. Pretty much all the research demonstrates clearly the college education is overall positively associated with happiness. And individuals who receive a college education usually have a higher level of happiness than those who do not. Now, there are lots of folks who have never gotten a college education or a graduate degree, and they're quite happy. But greater lifetime income, more stable marriages, longer and healthier lives, higher self-confidence, and on and on. So graduates, in a very special way, getting your degree tonight is a step along your path to pursue your happiness. Makes sense, right? But is that all there is? John Clifton, who's the CEO of Gallup, the organization that conducts polls across the world on many topics, makes the case in his book, Blind Spot, that there is a, actually a global rise of unhappiness, a global rise of unhappiness in our world. Gallup questions, questioned over 5 million people in 150 countries in 90 languages over the past 10 years. That's a pretty impressive poll. Their data shows a double-digit rise in stress, 
anger, worry, sadness, and physical pain, a rise in unhappiness. And while our world leaders pay close attention to measures like GDP and unemployment and the crime and birth rate and on and on, very few are tracking their citizens' well-being. Blind spot makes the case for the urgency, and I think you would agree with me, there is an urgency that leaders should measure and quantify happiness, how a person perceives their life. It's a great book, it's driven by data, I suggest it. But the point that I want to make to you is perhaps the pursuit of happiness is more complex as we humans tend to be than just a feeling of contentment, achievement, or emotions. One of my all-time favorite quotes, Mark Twain said, the two most important days of a person's life is the day you are born and the day you discover why you were born. The day you discover why. And I believe it's in the pursuit of that why that you're gonna find real happiness. And you've heard it from some of the speakers who have already gone before me. Graduates, don't just use your education to make a living, although that's fine. Use it to make a difference. Let what is, what is in your head infect your heart and then move your hands and become a passion to impact and influence the lives of others. Be successful in life, but be significant in life as well. Now, we all can't be famous or wealthy or our household name, right? But I, love, I so love what Mother Teresa once said. We all know only too well that what we are doing is nothing more than a drop in the ocean. But if the drop were not there, the ocean would be missing something. If the drop were not there, the ocean would be missing something. Graduates, you have an inalienable right to pursue happiness and that's what you've done tonight. But you also have an equally inalienable responsibility, a responsibility that can't be taken away to change this world, to make it matter that you lived at all. Class of 2023, it has been my and Rebecca's honor to serve you as your chancellor and first lady. Always know that your roots are here at this university, wherever life leads you, whatever choices you make, know that you always have a home called the broke. Believe in yourself and all that you are. Know that there is something inside of you that is greater than any obstacle you will face in life. Pursue success, pursue happiness, but I would say above all, pursue significance, okay? Okay, class of 2023, congratulations. You know, we have a, a little routine around here that we do, and I'm gonna do it with you. Now, this is the last time that you're gonna be able to do what we're about to do together. It's only the, really the only time, the rest of your life. I count it down, one, two, three, we yell together, go Braves. Now, I just want the graduates to do this, nobody else, okay? Cause graduates, I wanna see how loud and how proud you can get, okay? All right, so I'm gonna count it down. One, two, three, go Braves! Come on. <laughs> One, two, three. That's pretty good, much better. Now everyone in this auditorium. One, two, three. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Graduates, before we leave, I wanna help you recognize some very important people in your life. For some of you, these are the most important people in the world. And as I recognize these folks, as I call you out, please stand and remain standing. I would ask the parents or guardians of our graduates to stand and remain standing. I would ask... I would ask the spouses and the children of our graduates, would you please stand and remain standing? I would ask the grandparents 
and other family members, all grandparents and other family members of our graduates, would you please stand and remain standing? And finally, I will ask the friends, this should cover pretty much everyone else, the friends of our graduates to stand and remain standing. Now, while you are standing, it's, going, it's my pleasure now, graduates, to ask you to now rise and show your appreciation for the love, support, and interest in your future these people have given you. Clap for these people. Take my advice, at some point over the next 24, 48 hours, tell these people how much you appreciate what they've done for you in your life. Now, I would ask everyone to please stand and remain standing as we sing the alma mater, led by Victoria Martin. The lyrics are in your program. Graduates, this is a special time for you. Sing your alma mater together. At the conclusion of this ceremony, we invite all our graduates their families, friends, and our faculty to a reception over in the University Center Annex. Following the alma mater, I ask everyone, please remain standing during the recessional as we honor our graduates one last time. Please wait until the graduates have recessed before proceeding to the reception. One last time, graduates, class of 2023, I commend you, job well done. Victoria. strong. 
Thank you. 